There we go. It's recording. All set? Yeah. Call me in order. Agenda. Now's the time. Rich. And identify yourself for the oh, okay. Rich Ganong. I'm the vice chairman of the planning board. And uh, do you want to do a chip or do you want to talk? I'll, I'll start and you can fill in when you need to as you need to. I'm Chip Bassett, chairman of the Rear Rundle Planning Board. On Friday, uh, Ted Redway, the town planner, told me that the ZBA was going to hear an appeal. Uh, the planning board's decision regarding a consent decree uh, between Du Bois Livestock and the town of Arundel uh, regarding an application for a conditional use permit. But first thing, is the website correct that that ZBA meeting is on October 4th? Um, I'm not positive about that. I, I would think, I believe that Wendy usually has to do it within 30 days or something of receiving the application. I, I would, if it's posted that way, I imagine. I, sh I don't well, have heard Ted, Ted, the reason I ask is Ted gave me a different date. Oh, really? And, okay. And I'm concerned that <coughs> you'll understand that the, my reason for concern. Ted told me that it was going to be the 27th of September. And the difference being that the planning board is meeting on the 14th and on the 28th. Um, they, and I'll, I'll explain what, what we need, and if we need it by this Thursday, that's going to make things more challenging for everybody. Uh, so I wish we knew the answer to when the ZBA meeting was. Uh, We, we need to consult with legal counsel in uh, an executive session before the meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, the town planner has told me that Bergen and Parkinson, specifically <coughs> Leo Rachin, will be representing the Zoning Board of Appeals in this process. Uh, um, the Boys Livestock is challenging a decision made by the planning board. Uh, we were required to make a decision based upon a consent decree between the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Livestock. The planning board had no part in development of that or drafting of that consent decree. However, uh, the way it was written forced us to make a decision upon framing or not framing a conditional use permit. Uh, now we have to defend our decision to the Zoning Board of Appeals. So, this is a Board of Appeals, which as I understand it, is, a, is the same judicial body. Uh, and the attorney who gave us counsel when he advised us, interpreted the consent decree for the planning board, is the same one who is now going to be representing the Zoning Board of Appeals. So, it, if my understanding is correct, that, uh, that that Leah Rachel will be representing, Leah Rachel and Bergen Parkinson will be representing the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, the, the, the planning board has to have independent legal counsel. Uh, I, I, and, and we need to have an executive session with that legal counsel prior to the meeting, whenever it is, of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, so, 
if it's October 4th, that's fine. We can we can have an executive session uh, on the, the at our meeting on the 28th. But if it is zoning board of appeals meeting is on the 27th, we we, we need a little <coughs> on Thursday. I, I don't believe that it is the 27th because when Tad was leaving the office, like I said, I would have to check with Wendy. She does all of the scheduling with the ZBA, but when Tad was leaving, um, she was asking him for some information for, for the packet, and she was saying it was going to, you know, make it tight for her. So, for the ZBA. So. But, I mean, tomorrow I could find out tomorrow morning, but I don't know any sooner than that. I, but it says on the website that it's the fourth, and I believe that the website is correct because that was the information Keith, Keith gave me last week about the fact that this was going to occur. The problem I have is that this is a legal proceeding. The ZBA could tell us that, that we made a mistake. And the person that is supposed to be defending us is making the case to the ZBA as to which way they should rule. We don't think we've made a mistake. We think we looked at it. It has nothing to do with the land use ordinance. We don't think it should even be in front of the ZBA. Because we let, didn't let, base it on land use ordinance. We let, based it on a consent decree. Let, let, let me just emphasize that point. Uh, from, from our perspective, <coughs> Richard's in mind at, at, at the very least. The consent decree literally er erased the land use ordinance from anything having to do with the boys' livestock. All we have is the consent decree. So we, we don't believe that this should even be heard by the ZBA. Uh, I don't know who made the decision that it would be. Yeah, that's, that, that, I, I gather that's not part of the planning board's job. Uh, to make that, that call, uh, but if it is in front of the ZBA and we have to defend our decisions, we need competent legal counsel to do that. Com competent and unconflicted legal counsel. Now, did that just fall under a formality? It, had, it went through the ZBA because of the rejection of the... Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you folks, as I understand it, rejected their permit application which they were required to make based upon uh, as you saw it their failure to have uh, information <coughs> from Mr. Nagel our CEO to the effect that they were in compliance with all necessary state regulations uh, etc and they apparently were not so the appeal is from your decision to not grant them a permit but we, we understand we, we understand that we think that the proper reference would have been for them to go back to the judge and tell the judge we're violating their consent his consent decree. But, but the planning board made a decision we're not going to give you a permit based upon these for this reason. And they're saying that reasoning is incorrect. So they would go to the ZBA to overturn your decision. That would be the first step and then back to court. But even even if the I, I, okay I understand that and even if I were to grant that that's uh, a reasonable approach the court, the court decree that the selectman entered into doesn't give us the right to look at the land use ordinance. If it comes back to us, we're going to end up in the same place. But the ZBA will make that determination. Du Bois is free to go to the, and, and, and file for, for what they did. There's nothing that stops them from doing it. And the ZBA at that point, when they meet, they can make that decision and say, guess what, it shouldn't even come to us. But should we not have legal counsel that this is a legal hearing. We are unrepresented as well, a family. That's board. why Leah is there. Leah's she's not representing the ZBA. Yes, yes she, she is. is. She's, she's, representing she's there the advising. She's not representing, she's advising the ZBA as, a, as town council okay. um, in that proceeding. Really? Yes. And who is <coughs> she's, not, she's not there to prosecute anything. She's there to advise the ZBA as to what they need to do and how they need to accomplish that what findings they need to make, those types of things, uh, in preparation for an ultimate, I would assume, appeal to the Superior Court. Isn't that a conflict? But, no. But what about representing their decision? She's not representing the planning board. But well, who is? Nobody. <coughs> 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 a lawyer. 
that's <coughs> I appreciate your argument, believe me. Um, the only concern I have is that we've got a budget for legal fees. And I don't know where we stand with respect to that. If we don't have money available to spend, <coughs> then we've got a problem. We've got a so, problem. It, so the first thing we've got to do is find out whether we have anything available <coughs> in the uh, budget for fees for the planning board. And then if we do, uh, I certainly agree with you folks that if you are going to be there, you ought to have representation to defend the decision you make uh, and get assistance from you, from you know appropriate competent counsel. I mean, I'm on board with that. I, this happens all the time. You know, my firm represents the boards all the time because of uh, conflicts that develop between regular counsel and other guys. But usually. The uh, deciding board, whether it's Board of Assessment Review, Board of Appeals, uh, has their own attorney at, at hotly contested hearings. So I think we need to find out first what the money issue is like, uh, and thereafter uh, I think Keith should be consulted about, um, assuming this board approves that, uh, Keith should be consulted about getting conflict, uh, or not conflict, but counsel for the and let, me, let me stay clear. I, I did try to get hold of. I, I didn't find out about this until the, literally the end of business on Friday, mm -hmm. uh, and Keith was unavailable today. Right. But I, 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 I should have started with. I apologize for just dropping a, a, a bomb at the start of your meeting. <laughs> That's um, but but uh, this is this is a, 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 a an untenable situation for the board. Mm -hmm. I just, I just want to be, to be sure. I mean, that Keith's, you know, not envisioning that we're going to run into problems down the road with any okay, other yeah. issues because, given what's happened, I we're going to be spending some money on council for not only this proceeding but for others. I'm sure that are coming up. So I'd like to get get his input on that. I'm sure. But um, is there anything else you guys want to add to that? Okay. Yes, Jack. If I, I throw in my comment on this. Uh, Jack Reeds. Jack Reeds. Uh, my, my comment would be that uh, uh, this is important enough so there must be money, or must be an attorney involved in this, and uh, that early in the budget year, uh, you simply find the money if you have to go elsewhere within the budget, or you have a special town meeting to appropriated after the fact that uh, it should be possible to make a commitment tonight, my feeling, rather, rather than defer uh, so that you know, these folks don't help. I don't have any problem moving forward subject to any fiscal constraints that the town manager has that town council or council for the planning board be hired for the purposes of representation at the CBA meeting hearing. Um, but oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think we ought to take a, have a motion to that effect and, and vote on that. Yeah, I'll make that motion. I'll second that. If we find we're short on uh, money yeah. for legal, yeah. is it too late to put that into the special town meeting? Yeah. 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 No, we're not, we're not sure. Not yet. Not yet. No. Okay, motion to remain seconded. Any further discussion? Conversation? Can you just can you clarify why the two of us are going separate roads and need separate counsel? I mean, what's the? As I said, the counsel for the CBA is there to advise them, which is the same as our counsel. Right, but there, yeah. she's there to advise that board on what it needs to do. Sure. Okay. Yeah. It's not. He's, she is not there to represent the town before the board. Okay, the planning board as the uh, agency that is whose decision needs to be defended needs counsel. Basically, the town needs their own counsel. Right. This board needs their own counsel in order to present their side of the case to the ZBA to support the decision they make. Why is that? The ZBA is effectively a judicial body, and 
we are the defendant, the planning board is the defendant in this case. You know, but Leah can't prosecute, so to speak, the case and advise the decision maker. That's a conflict. Hasn't the decision already been made, though? Not, not by the ZBA. The planning board's made a decision based upon their review of the record. But the ZBA is now going to review what they did and could come to a different conclusion. So, I'm just, what, what's Tad's position? I mean, has, has Tad gone and said, hey, we need representation? I would tend to think that the planner would have said something at this point saying, hey, I'm not going in here blind. Well, at the same time, it's, like they're saying, it's not a land use issue. There it, it was a consent but, agreement. I understand that, but you still got to have somebody there in case the ZBA decides differently, right? We can't, you can't. We can't sit there and assume that the ZBA is going to say, oh, yeah, it's not a land use. The ZBA may listen to it here. We don't know that. He will right? be there, I think. Well, I think the ZBA's got to hear uh, it. Well, I mean, land use stuff doesn't, doesn't make any difference to me. A decision was made, whether it's based upon the land use ordinance or any other ordinance. Right. Or, this, in this case, the, the, the decision was made by the planning board. That's what's being appealed. Right. So we, we don't think that the ZBA <coughs> has any standing. Because it's not based on the land use ordinance. But, but that's you know, it, this okay. is a done deal. It's going before them. That's something that's in that that's something that Leah would advise the board. Right. If you were to make that argument, okay, that they don't have jurisdiction because of what you just recited, that's something that Leah is going to advise the board. Now she can't be advising the board yeah, at the same time you're advising right. you. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, that's that's our issue. She right. can't talk to them and yeah. represent right. us at the same time. Let me assure you all that, we, that this is not a position that the planning board wants to be in. Uh, we're, we're, we're in this position because of the, the, the fundamental problem and because of the consent decree. No. We're in this position because whoever signed the consent okay. decree didn't follow through. Okay. Yes. Okay, any further discussion? Jason, you? No, 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 no. I'll leave that motion. Right. Yeah. All in favor then? Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, does anybody else have anything? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm Priscilla Coffin, and I want to say that I really appreciate the work that you members of the Board of Selectmen do. I think you're very professional, you're very thoughtful in how you process the information that comes before you and as a resident of the town I want to say thank you for the work that you do and we have two members of the planning board and I will say thank you to you. You will notice that I've been in the audience recently. I don't have issues at the moment. And I just want to say thank you. I appreciate the work that you do. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Jake. Jake Hawkins. On a lighter note, <laughs> um, I'm here tonight to invite all you guys to our annual Heritage Day. We have it every year. It's the fifth year. And to give you a little um, perspective or uh, on how this sort of started, back in 2012, it was we were having issues with, uh, I guess there was, some acrimony in terms of what the school was going on and, and between neighbors and everything. We just, as an organization, a historical society, our mission's to hold on to and develop and uh, nurture our history, but also it's a community building uh, type of organization. And whereas other historical societies are, sort of have a rarefied thing where that's all they do, we're, we're a little bit of both. And as a result of of what was going on in the community, we thought we need sort of a, a reconciliation time, and that's how this whole heritage that thing started. And we have, uh, it's meant to be a community day for Arundel, and for the people of Arundel to, to show their talents, to show their gifts, to show what we are about. And so I'm inviting <coughs> you guys, it's from 10 o'clock till 5 o'clock on Saturday, and bring your kids, bring your grandkids, We've got lots of games to play and stuff like that. So thank you very much. Thanks, Dick. <coughs> Anybody else? Anything else? <coughs> okay, then we'll move on to the minutes of August 28th. 
2017 and September 5. I'll second for the 28th. Okay, we had a motion and a second on to approve the minutes from uh, August 28, 2017. All in favor? And how about the, the lengthy meeting we had on the 5th? Yeah. yeah. We'll move to approve. Okay, I'll second that. Any further discussion, corrections? All in favor? Okay, we don't have any committee or board reports at this point. Okay. Under manager report, special town meeting, I guess that's on here just to reflect the fact that we had previously voted to have that special town meeting this evening. And due to, I think, some issues with proper notice and posting, uh, we have rescinded that motion and uh, rescheduled that meeting for September 25th to deal with the recreational <coughs> Vehicle issues in the equine changes in the ordinance. Okay, so for anybody who's watching this, it's the, now the 25th for that meeting. Uh, under B, we have established the tax rate for fiscal year 17 18. The board at the September 5th meeting established a mill rate of 15.50 which is an increase of about 38 cents over the previous fiscal year. I would note, however, that includes the expenses associated with our second contract deputy. Um, so that reflects, or at least I think reflects some of the, the increase there. That's around a $76 a year increase on a $200,000. And just for your information, too, the, the homestead exemption has increased this year from the Thousand to twenty thousand, where at 95%, so last year it was showing as 14.5, this year it's going to be 19.5 off the assessed value. So actually, some people's bills decreased. Mm -hmm. you know, so between the tax increase mm -hmm. and the homestead. And those were um, sent out, they should have been out in today's mail the latest. Either this Saturday, or I think, I believe it was today, they were, they were guaranteeing that they were going to be postmarked today. Because we needed the October 10th due date, so it says 30 days before, and where the 10th fell on a Sunday, it gives us that Monday leeway, so they are out in time. <laughs> Fair question, Paul. Yes. What does that uh, mill rate provide for the overlay? It was four thousand. Just over four thousand oh. dollars. <clears throat> Anything else? Okay. Just a little spreadsheet we always yeah. do with the dates, and it shows also. Your increase in the uh, real estate values from last year, as far as your total increase of real estate and personal properties on that. That's spreadsheet. Okay, the next item is the enforcement of the other consent decree uh, relative to Map 38, Lot 8A. We have a report that, in fact, the uh, property owner has brought his uh, land use uh, issues into compliance. Uh, so I guess we're that's fine at this point in time. Compliance with the 2003 Three, right? Right. Um, which we, that's what we required. Um, I guess we got a visit here from Maine Municipal relative to lost control. Um, an audit for, uh, with respect to the Department of Labor. Um, yep, they, they came in and they uh, are basically going to provide a report, I believe, to the town manager for any thing that they recommended that might be um, needing to be adjusted so that if we do have any OSHA inspections or something, that we'll hopefully get less issues at <laughs> that time. So, yeah. Okay, and lastly, under management report, I guess uh, Keith has been approached by Habitat for Humanity looking for um, land uh, to, I guess, engage one of their projects here and uh, has asked people to, who might be interested uh, to 
contact them. Yeah, he said that they're always uh, looking for parcels of either tax acquired property or or if we're aware of any foreclosure properties, bank foreclosures, things like that, or large landowners who are looking to have tax write-offs mm -hmm. and would like to donate a couple of acres. They're always looking for places that they can build new houses for that. Okay, moving on into old business uh, discussion of street vendor fees. Uh, we have some proposal from the manager with respect to those fees. Suggesting that uh, a yearly fee for a street vendor might be $200, a six month fee uh, might be $100, and a special event, which she says is one day, might be $50 with a $50 application fee, which, if approved, will be applied to the uh, respective fee. Um, thoughts, everybody? <coughs> I think the special event might be more than just one day. I mean, if somebody might be out at a, a weekend thing, yeah. um, maybe that would be a one to three day. Or three day. day. Um, I don't know whether these numbers are high or low, but he says I think it's a roll. Yeah. Um, well, he, I believe he said something about, um, I was asking him a little bit today, he said, I think Kenny Bunk has a yearly one of 500 and Bitterford is like 50. So yeah, it's all over. He, it's all over. But he, yeah, yeah, he showed us before it was all over yeah. the place, but uh, I, I think we should be charging more than 200 bucks. I think, you know, that should be more of like, a, you know, a 500, uh, 250, and, you know, 100 dollars or something like that effect in that range. Anybody else got any thoughts on that? Yeah, I like Dan's number. <laughs> well, you know, these people are coming <laughs> in don't. here and they're uh, they're making money, but they're not paying taxes, they're not doing anything. And I think really that's, as I stated before, that's kind of the, the concern that we've heard from some businesses. <coughs> now, I, you guys haven't had meetings yet with businesses concerning no, but we're we're going to be scheduling meetings with, with, with brick and mortar stores to come in and talk with us about it. We, yeah, we, we attempted to do that. So on this Thursday, and the town player party on Friday, that uh, for some reason those people to get it up. So before we set any date. Oh yeah, I mean we're not setting here tonight, but uh, I mean I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. I mean I wouldn't do it until Keith was here anyway. Yeah, talk about his thoughts. I, I, I'd like to hear from the from the. The business businesses in the area, what their thoughts are, because we kind of heard both sides. We kind of heard one business stand up and said, "Yeah," and another one said, "Yeah, I don't care. It just brings people." So, you know, like to hear from their thoughts. But yeah, I think it's going to make sense to coordinate if you guys decide to put an ordinance in place to regulate these businesses rather than what we have now. I mean, you know, we ought to have discussion of fees kind of at the same time. Yeah. I think. If they, if they do it as part of the land use, will it be removed as part of our yeah, separate right. ordinance? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we'll kind of table that and, and let, that, let that develop over time. Here. Uh, under new business, we have a full permit application. Project has approved it. I guess it's been up there for a while <laughs> and apparently Augusta, I mean they turned around and, and the first application we got said and it said Augusta so I guess they kind of mixed us up and sent us the wrong permit but so the pole has been up there for a while and it is in, in place all right it's I guess two poles actually mm -hmm. and move to approve I'll second that Further okay. questions, discussion. I, I could see us saying, "Oh no, we're not going to approve this. Take those poles <laughs> out." <laughs> yeah. Right. They're probably the newer, higher poles too. Motion well, made, second to approve. All in favor? Is this the one we want to sign. Mm -hmm.
Okay. Um, is there any other business to come before the board? Maybe I'll take them. Payable and payable, that's it. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Make a motion, we approve it. Payable and payable. Second. All in favor? That takes care of everything on the agenda. Motion to adjourn.